In this video, we're going to discuss the difference between a company's return on equity and its return on assets. Return on assets, or ROA for short, tells you how good a job the company did generating a profit given the assets it had at its disposal. Thus, ROA is a great way to compare the profitability of two companies that are of very different sizes, because it's taking the net income of the company and scaling it by the assets that were used to generate that net income. Now, return on equity, on the other hand, is taking the company's net income and scaling it by the average stockholder's equity. Thus, it's telling you how good a job the company did generating profit given the capital that was put up to finance the firm by the company's equity holders. Remember that assets can be financed by debt or equity. So what return on equity, we're saying, look, given the capital that was put up by the equity holders, how good a job did the company do generating profit? Now, ROA and ROE are actually related concepts. And we could see this when we do DuPont analysis and we disaggregate ROA and ROE into their various components. Now, if you remember, ROA is the product of a company's profit margin and its asset turnover. Now, if we take those two, those same two things, profit margin and asset turnover, and then we multiply by a third thing, financial leverage, the average assets divided by average stockholders equity, you get return on equity. Thus, these things here are common to each equation. The only difference is with ROE, we're taking the profit margin, the asset turnover, then we're multiplying them by financial leverage. So this right here is equal to ROA. So really ROE is equal to ROA times financial leverage. So they're, they're actually related. So here's again, just to make sure you understand this relationship here, a company's return on equity is equal to its ROA times its financial leverage, which is this right here. Thus, the higher the financial leverage, assuming, so let's say this company is very profitable that has a high ROA, and if the higher the leverage, the higher the return on equity will be. In other words, a company's financial leverage amplifies its ROA. And it can actually go the other way. So if the company is losing money, has a negative ROA, uh, then ba basically a higher leverage is going to lead to even lower or even more negative ROE. So again, leverage is going to amplify ROA. So you could have two companies with similar return on assets, but one has a lot higher leverage and thus has higher return on equity. And I'm going to show you that in a second. So again, think about it like this. Financial leverage makes the good times better and it makes the bad times worse. Now, let's look at some actual data. I pulled some actual data for companies that make footwear uh, that, and I, they had different fiscal year ends, but I tried to get the closely, uh, most closely where it was data for 2022. So I've, I've got some data here. Now we'll just focus, I've got six firms, but we'll just focus on Crocs and on Decker's Outdoor Corporation. Okay, so these two companies here, and I've already done the calculations. You can see I've got ROA here in this row, and then I've got the ROE here. So let's just focus here on these two. Now you see that when it comes to ROA, Decker's actually had a higher return on assets than what Crocs did, right? So we're looking at 21.14% uh, versus 17.87% for Crocs. So you could say, okay, during that period, Decker's did a better job generating profit given the assets it had. But these companies made very different financing decisions. Look at the financial leverage for Crocs, right? Much higher than that of Decker's Outdoor Corporation. So what does that mean? That means that Crocs had an ROE of almost 130% compared to just 31% for Decker's Outdoor. So even though Decker's Outdoor did a better job using its assets to generate profit than what Crocs did, the fact that Crocs was so much more uh, heavily leveraged than Decker's Outdoor meant that basically the equity holders for Crocs had to put up a lot less equity to generate the profit they got. Now, bear in mind, you might say, well, why doesn't every company go around and have financial leverage of more than uh, set, more than seven and so forth? Because remember, increasing the leverage increases uh, the, the chance of default, the risk of the firm, the cost of financial distress, and so forth. The key takeaway is that when we're comparing the ROA of the different firms and we say, okay, well, now let's look at the return to the equity holders, it's gonna be a function of the ROA and the financial leverage. And again, when times are good, 
and the company is making money, then higher financial leverage is going to result in a return on equity that is much higher than the company's return on assets.